Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Blair or the Illuminati and today we're gonna to be talking about another MLM. And this one has been pretty highly requested and there's something we don't see as much in MLMs. I'm talking about Primerica, the insurance company MLM. And yeah, they're everywhere. And MLMs can be in about just any field you think of, apparently. They've been around since 1977 as well, so they've had plenty of time to have lawsuits, controversies, and work their way right around those pyramid scheme loopholes. So without any further ado, let's dive right in and see what Primerica is all about and discuss why an insurance company should never, ever be an MLM. Let's get into it. So who is Primerica to start? Well, on their about page, they say they are a Main Street company for Main Street, North America. I get that they're trying to say they're Main Street instead of Wall Street, which is a term economists use to refer to smaller independent businesses. But let me ask you, how can Primerica say this when they rake in billions of dollars of revenue every year? Does that sound like a small business to you? Because it doesn't to me. Now, there's nothing inherently wrong with being a larger Wall Street type business, as long as you're still running that business honestly and effectively. From sentence one, this about me page on Primerica's website rubs me the wrong way, but let me just try to give them a chance here. Their services include financial need analysis, term life insurance, investing for the future, auto and home insurance, legal protection, and identity theft protection. Now, most of the time, this would be where I talk about the founder and what they sell. However, because this is insurance, I can't just glance at their products and say, well, this is overpriced based on common knowledge. It's a little bit trickier than that. And though I did want to compare prices, Primerica only offers a quote over the phone after you give them your social security number, vehicle identification number, and license number. Geico, for comparison, doesn't ask me that. When I went on to Geico to see if all of this is normal information just to ask for a quote, I find out it's not. They asked about my driving habits, address and occupation, not social security information. So that's kind of a big flag for me. And maybe this is me being a little bit paranoid, but that just doesn't seem super normal. As for their founder, there's really nothing particularly shady to talk about here. He's not an ex-convict or murderer like some of the other MLMs we've seen, but comes from a relatively uneventful background. Business Wire wrote an article about their history and said the following. Art Williams, a former Georgia high school football coach, founded A.L. Williams and Associates Inc., later to become Primerica, starting with a team of seven founders and a total of a mere 85 sales representatives. Their goal? Easy. All they aimed to do was take on and challenge one of the oldest and most established industries in North America, the life insurance industry. By advocating the concept of buy term and invest the difference instead of more costly cash value life policies. Since the very beginning, Primerica has offered an unparalleled opportunity for people from all walks of life to achieve financial independence by helping others learn how to do the same. The company's personal approach to financial services, meeting and educating families across the kitchen table combines with a strong sense of mission from which it has never wavered. To help Main Street families become financially independent. Armed with this passionate crusade, A.L. Williams grew rapidly from its inception and by 1984, the company placed a staggering $38 billion of life insurance in force to lead the industry in seven short years. And that was just the beginning as the company continued to grow and become a true industry leader in the decades ahead. So for right now, this seems pretty standard and nothing really extreme or even super alarming. There are a few MLMs that fly under the radar and don't really get questioned much. Even if the business model of an MLM itself is unethical, very, very, very few MLMs remain to avoid controversy. Usually it's because they're a young company when that's the case. And for a while, it does seem like Primerica avoided controversy, but only because the allegations of questionable ethics came under a different name. A large stake in Traveler's Insurance Company was bought by Primerica in the early 90s, and at the time, Citibank also operated under that same umbrella. Travelers and Citicorp combined to become Citigroup later on, and Citigroup separated from Primerica in 2011. 
And it's a bit confusing, but my main point here is that until 2011, Primerica and Travelers were operating together. And it was the moment that Travelers became a part of Primerica that our MLM here was finally thrown into question. In 1992, the Hartford Current wrote, Travelers Corp has attracted a new partner who has an aggressive child unpopular among its peers. The old line respected Hartford insurer is planning to sell 27% of itself to Primerica Corp, parent of one of the most maligned life insurers in the nation. Primerica owns the former A.L. Williams Insurance Organization, which has stirred controversy for more than a decade and continues to generate complaints. The organization has repeatedly been accused of misleading sales practices and questionable agent recruiting schemes, allegations Primerica denies and attributes largely to insecure competitors. Analysts have hailed Traveler's alliance with Primerica Corp as a boost to the Hartford insurer's financial strength. Neither analysis nor Traveler's believe it will be tainted by the A.L. Williams controversy. And that last line stood out to me, the A.L. Williams controversy. Arthur Williams changed his insurance name to Primerica in the 80s. So does this possibly mean that something happened before then? Well, if I go to Wikipedia to see everything listed out, there's nothing that really suggests a controversy even happened in the first place. People questioned why travelers would associate with Primerica, but as far as a few basic searches go, it looks like this is the first time Primerica was actually thrown into question. When I Google A.L. Williams controversy, Williams himself comes up, but nothing about his insurance company once named for him. So I dug into the recesses of the internet to try and figure out what A.L. Williams had done eons ago and wondering if this is what made him change his company's name in the first place. Well, after some time, I finally found some answers in an old New York Times article from 1986 that not only references this A.L. Williams scandal, but explains it. The 43-year-old Mr. Williams runs the A.L. Williams General Agency from new headquarters in suburban Atlanta. The agency sells more life insurance nationwide than any other company through a little-known insurer, the Massachusetts Indemnity and Life Insurance Company. It has pushed mass indemnity to the top by selling only term policies, which pay off only on the death of the insured, while denouncing the cash value prices favored by most insurers. These combine insurance and savings in varied forms known as whole life or universal life. The life insurance industry has ripped off the public by complicating what is really a simple business protection of the family breadwinner, said Mr. Williams. The rise of Mr. Williams as a nation's premier life insurance salesman has the industry in some turmoil. Critics say he ignores the advantages of cash value insurance and that his agency sales tactics are sometimes questionable. Last year, in fact, in response to a suit brought by a prudential agent, the Williams agency agreed to re-emphasize regulations as they apply to sales agents. So by the sounds of it, Williams had such aggressive sales agents that they were actually sued for it. With Hunbots, it's easy enough to ignore them and let them be. It's a pain, obviously, but if you need more candles or essential oils or nutrition shakes, you can go elsewhere. But this is why Hunbots and insurance doesn't mix you have to keep communicating with your insurance. If an emergency happens, you're contacting those people. If you have to renew your policy, you have to talk to those insurance hunbots. But that isn't the only problem the company had. Mr. Williams' strong views about traditional life insurers combined with the mounting numbers of policies his army of zealous agents has sold to customers wooed from other companies have stirred up antipathy among many in the industry. It's a parasitical organization, said George Exner, vice president for district agencies at the Prudential Insurance Company, who points out accurately that most A.L. Williams policies are sold not to first-time life insurance buyers, but to those who hold cash value policies issued by other companies. Mr. Williams seems to relish going after this market. Our business is the replacement business, he said, adding that he just instituted a 20-year fixed rate policy to lure more of his rival's customers. With the new policy, I told our agents we might have to change the name of our company from Massachusetts Indemnity to Cannibal Life. Our competition won't be able to match it in price. We're fixin' to knock their butts off like you wouldn't believe. The agency has already captured droves of new customers. In 1984, Mass Indemnity, whose policies were sold exclusively by Mr. Williams' agency, surpassed Prudential Insurance by selling $38.3 billion of new life insurance to individuals, compared to Prudential's $38 billion in sales for all types of life insurance. 
Last year, it issued $65.6 billion in new coverage against Prudential's $46.6 billion. Mr. Williams says this year, the agency will sell $90 billion in new policies underwritten by Mass Indemnity, which was acquired by the American Can Company three years ago. An American Can subsidiary, Associated Madison, manages Mass Indemnity's investments, which like all life insurers' investments, must pass regulatory scrutiny. Mr. Williams considers the close ties to American Can a blessing that raised his agency's credibility virtually overnight. And I can stand by what I said earlier. Not every single giant corporation has to be greedy and dishonest, but it sure feels like the bigger they get, the worse they get too. Williams is no exception here. I mean, the way he speaks saying that they should change their name to Cannibal Life is just kind of gross. It's one thing to be proud of your success and it's another to be nasty, braggy and whatever the hell this is. And the lawsuit we're talking about from Prudential, the New York Times wrote about that too. As part of a legal settlement, the Williams agency not only had to pay the Prudential agent who had charged A.L. Williams with violating insurance rules, but it also agreed to issue a 14 point summary to agents reminding them of tactics that violate regulations in Texas and in other states. The cautions included these reminders that the Federal Trade Commission, which questioned the value of whole life insurance in a 1979 report, does not endorse the purchase of any particular form of life insurance. That a 1983 cover story on Mr. Williams in the Saturday Evening Post does not imply that the publication endorses term life insurance. That A.L. Williams prohibits agents from making disparaging comments about other insurance companies, particularly those implying that agents sell whole life or universal life policies mainly because they can earn higher commissions. Meanwhile, Mr. Williams is busy with a new sales tool. Two weeks ago, A.L. Williams began broadcasting 90 minutes a day to its agents at 350 locations around the country through a closed circuit system believed to be the largest corporate TV network in the nation. By midsummer, the agency expects to increase the number of locations to 500. It puts us light years ahead of the competition, said Mr. Williams. Communications is a very important part of any marketing program, and now we've got a big leg up. Now, I know this was nearly 40 years ago, but getting in trouble with the FTC is an impressively large stain on a company's reputation. Even if this was widely reported in the 80s, it's not easy information to come by now. I don't know how many people that are signing up for Primerica now even know that it used to be called A.L. Williams or know about their past, but these values are the foundation of the company, not some comment on their about page about how they work for Main Street instead of Wall Street. But in the 90s, things just kept getting better from here. Once Primerica acquired Travelers, the shady behavior only worsened, if anything. The agent's single sales pitch, buy term and invest the difference, glosses over or ignores the fact that a change to another policy could result in the loss of some built up cash value or might not suit the needs of all families. In fact, many who buy a new term policy never do invest the difference and thus lose the savings feature they had before. Those who want to invest the difference are encouraged by Primerica agents to buy mutual funds managed by another arm of travelers, American Capital Management and Research. Primerica agents exploit a loophole in regulations that otherwise prevent mutual funds from projecting future returns by doing just that as part of the insurance pitch. What's more, Primerica's term policies are not low priced when compared with other term insurance on the market and American Capital's mutual funds have both extraordinary high sales charges, as much as 8.5% with middling returns. So how low do you have to sink to suggest to potential investors to invest in you? How is that not a conflict of interest? Working these loopholes and more shady behavior seem to be Primerica's specialty. Well, sort of. He clearly wasn't that good at it because he left them in a tangle of lawsuits in July of 1990, and the sales tactics continued to be beyond aggressive and scummy, so much so that these sales agents were referred to as termites. In 1992, the most recent year studied by California regulators, Primerica Life had the second worst complaint record among the 10 largest life insurers in that state. A year earlier, it was the worst. Agents were even advised not to use the I word, insurance, when selling to clients. Instead, they were told to treat it like an opportunity, which reminds me of something a Hunbot would say, honestly. You're not selling essential oils, honey, you're selling an opportunity. So now that we've gone back in time 30 and 40 years ago, we're gonna focus for a moment on the far more recent lawsuit of eight years ago in 2012. 
Now, thankfully, this one doesn't require diving into the New York Times' time machine, so there's a little bit more information available on the topic. In case you aren't aware, or maybe you just live under a rock or haven't heard the stigma, there's a lot of old people in Florida. It's where grandma and grandpa retire to, and unfortunately, it's the state that Primerica targeted the most for their schemes. Multiple lawsuits were filed in 2012 when Primerica tried to convince people to put their retirement funds into risky investments. This wasn't just a few either, but 238. That's not just some small error that can be forgiven or forgotten easily. It's an inherent flaw in how business is supposed to run. The complaints filed against Primerica Investments relate to the selection of benefit options in the Florida Retirement System plans for public employees. Primerica has defended itself vigorously, the company said in a filing with the Securities and Exchange Commission, and both courts and FINRA arbitration panels have dismissed the claims or awarded less than what was sought. And the more I looked into this case, the more cases I kept finding. A 2008 case involved a dispute over ownership of the proceeds of a $40,000 life insurance policy. The deceased ex-wife claims that she and the three daughters she had with the deceased owns the proceeds of the life insurance policy pursuant to a divorce decree. The deceased's second wife claims ownership to the funds based on an insurance policy change of beneficiary from which at the time of the deceased death identified her as the sole beneficiary. Apparently, Primerica gave the funds to the wrong people in this one, and it was some argument over who the beneficiary actually was. In 2014, they straight out refused to pay an Arizona woman after her husband passed away. They denied her claim and said that her husband wasn't even covered for God knows what reason. Another case in Florida says that the life insurance policy of someone lapsed, and even though the policyholder wasn't notified of it lapsing, Primerica refused to pay out and they had to go to court. All of this sounds bad, but believe me, it can get much, much worse. In 2015, Senate Republicans were sold on the idea of Primerica for retirement savings. Yeah. Republicans called on Primerica President Peter Schneider to testify against a new Obama administration retirement security proposal at a Tuesday hearing before the Senate Committee on Health, Education, Labor, and Pensions. The Department of Labor rule would impose a fiduciary duty on investment advisors requiring them to act in the best interest of their clients. It would bar account managers from steering people into financial products that maximize benefits for investment specialists rather than retirees. The Obama administration calculates that Americans lose $17 billion a year to hidden fees and conflicted investment advice. In other words, the rule is designed to prevent exactly what 238 Florida workers said Primerica did to them in the years leading up to the financial crisis, steer them into inappropriate financial products for the personal gain of the sales team. This is where MLMs go from irritating to blood boiling to truly worrying. We have government officials actually trusting Primerica president to make decisions for the US Primerica and MLM. The business model again is inherently messed up. It doesn't earn money for 99% of the employees. It's greedy and only benefits the people at the top. Now, we already have just, just a variety of problems in our country with laws and business models and all these things that make it so difficult for people that are in poverty to get ahead and companies like Primerica aren't really helping. And Primerica is only validating that and pushing it even further. And it seriously, seriously worries me that it actually got to government officials. You'd think that the people that run our country would know better than to trust someone associated with an MLM, but clearly not all of them think that way. People get so caught up in listening to someone charismatic talking about the numbers, hearing about how much money Primerica earns, that it can be easy to forget what their business model actually is. Just to hammer this point home, in case anyone here for some reason doesn't know how little an MLM actually earns, let's go over the downline's earnings. When you join Primerica, you can expect to get their new recruitment manual. Rather than go over anything all that noteworthy, a hefty section of their manual is about visualizing goals. The whole, where do you see yourself in five years? What are your business goals, etc. If this were a serious lengthy manual, then I could understand. But so much of it is open-ended and they go on about the power of partnership and the keys to winning about the same amount of time they go on about their products. Although the Primerica salaries look promising on Glassdoor, and indeed, that's including the insurance representatives and higher ups. So aside from the cheesy recruitment manual you have to go through, if you're at the downline, the average you'll earn is somewhere in the neighborhood of 5,000 or so per year, which is around $100 a week. And hey, that's better than plenty of MLMs out there. But if you're working your butt off full time trying to find people to buy insurance from you, you'll be earning less than $2.50 an hour. And if you're working full time, it's $5 
$10 an hour, which is of course less than minimum wage. So look, I won't go through all the nitty gritty details about the archived criticisms from Pimerica's Wikipedia or every single personal story there is, but it's worth saying a few of them before we end today's video. This could just as well be every representative story with the way this company is run. So here it is, one story from Sequence Inc. My name is Anne and I was a Primerica representative full-time for about seven months from May, 2007 to December, 2007. I ended up in a multi-level marketing job in Primerica as a young adult. When I first joined the company, I was promised that everything was easy and I'd be making as much, if not more than I was at my full-time steady desk job. So I quit my regular job because at the time when the opportunity was presented to me, it was a regular paying job with very flexible hours. When I wasn't making sales left and right, it was my fault, always my fault. I didn't try hard enough, I wasn't pushy enough. I couldn't be relentless enough to tire out the client and just make them give in to me. It wasn't enough that I was always in the office from nine to 12 making phone calls trying to recruit people, always trying to get on appointments, always at training. Went to Atlanta, Georgia for their big convention weekend because it was what I needed to see to jumpstart my business. My life became Primerica. I lost friends, lost my self-esteem and dignity, lost sight of my passions because God forbid I spend time doing anything else other than PFS, Primerica Financial Services. And that still wasn't enough. I was still lazy in the eyes of other reps because I kept barely missing my marks to get my promotions. And when I wanted to leave to pursue my dream to become a veterinarian, I was a huge dumb loser who gave up too easily. In the seven months that I actually was an active representative, I only made a total of about $700, which is 800 less than what I would have made in one month at my old desk job, $10,500 less than what I would have made in those seven months. Thanks a lot, direct upline manager, who told me I'd be making more than what I made with my steady job. He sold me the dream, all right, but it turned into a damn nightmare. And no surprises here, because this is really similar to what we hear from just about every MLM. Maybe this one is the only one story, right? It doesn't mean everyone has to be this way. Well, there's plenty of others from stories over on Reddit's anti-MLM subreddit, to news articles, to consumer affairs. It was between 2002 to 2004 or so, I was around nine years old living with my single mother. I'm not sure how she heard about Primerica. It's very likely that they simply published a job posting in the paper. I remember her being chronically late or literally everything. I never made it to school or play dates on time. It was becoming a real problem, but not for Primerica. In fact, she even brought me to work with her many times. They had meetings where they have me read aloud how they were top three in something or another. One day, the owners bought their $2 million motor home to work and let us all walk through it. The fact that I remember it was $2 million goes to show how much they must have been repeating it multiple times. They bragged a lot about the money they made. It turns out my mom never actually made any money, but paid them to take their courses to become a certified insurance provider. I've heard a lot of stories here and I've never heard of anyone else getting roped into their courses, but she says there were a ton of people taking them and that no one ever actually passed them. They preyed on a single mother when she was completely broke. On consumer affairs, one user named Gary wrote the following. A broker named Danya convinced my girlfriend and her friend to join Primerica's pyramid scheme by misleading her into thinking she was a financial advisor. My girlfriend being a first year college student felt very inclined to follow the guidance of this seemingly young and empowered female broker. In doing so, she was guided and taken advantage of by being persuaded to join Primerica by paying a $130 Canadian dollar membership fee and a monthly fee of $28 USD. As soon as I put the pieces together, I messaged the broker to drop all affiliation with Primerica after paying the initial fees, but the broker is no longer responding and Primerica is still trying to charge my girlfriend and her friend for a monthly fee. With these stories, their shady history, 238 lawsuits, the insulting wages for their downline and pushy tactics, I think it's pretty safe to say that this is obviously an MLM scheme that I would never put a penny into. Not that I would put a penny into any of them, but it just goes to show that MLMs can really be in anything, not just in beauty, fashion, diet, or trendy things that we're used to. So unfortunately, it means all the more research should be done when you're looking at choosing an insurance company or any other company if you're not really sure of its origins, as if that process wasn't super painful already. But with that being said, guys, that's where I'm going to end today's video. So let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. And if you guys liked today's video, give it a like. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. 
If you guys want even more content from me, you can pop open my description box. You're gonna find links to my second channel for my puppy Casper, a collaboration channel with Sad Milk. All of my social media, Discord, Twitch, all the fun stuff will be down below. So again, guys, thanks so much for watching today's video. I love you and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.